My name is Nonzaria. And I'm Matt from Disability Services at Monash Uni. Um, we're here to uh, present uh, recommending alternative arrangements for assessment information using Moodle. Um, so we'll like to talk about the terminology we'll be using first. Um, so at Monash courses, when we talk about courses, we're talking about the degree that the students are studying in. So we've changed it to um, units, um, which when we talk about in Moodle, uh, in Monash Moodle, we talk in units. When um, we'll be using a lot of uh, AAA um, has the acronym, which is for Alternative Arrangements for Assessment. Assessment can be anything from online quizzes to class tests to an assignment. So, so at Monash University, we have about 70,000 students enrolled. Um, 1,500 of those students um, are registered with Disability Support Services. 888 students um, that are registered with, um, that out of the 1,500 um, requires AAA um, in Moodle. And um, there are about 1,255 units um, with AAA data in Moodle. Well, can I just add? Yep, sorry. I'll just add there too that of those uh, 1,255 units, uh, they involved, the staff who could access those units were about uh, uh, 4,000 teaching staff. Okay, so why do we need this? Uh, the, the difficulties for the disability services is with uh, such a large organisation, um, a large number of units, different forms of organisation in the faculties, who's responsible for arranging which kinds of alternative assessments. Our problem has been, uh, the challenge for us has been to be able to uh, track our students' enrolments to uh, determine who are the relevant staff associated with those units that they're enrolled in, uh, determine when internal assessments are being run in each of those units, uh, so that we can then deliver the timely advice on the alternative arrangements that need to be uh, put in place for those assessments. Uh, so the, the way we've been doing that really is uh, when the student registers with us, uh, we provide them with a support letter, uh, which basically outlines their alternative arrangements and it's, the, it's their uh, responsibility to pass that uh, uh, letter on to the relevant academic staff or, or administrative staff who have to put those things in place for them. So uh, we have a, 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 another, in some faculties we provide ad hoc lists of students where the uh, AAAs are administered centrally. But to give you an example of how it works at the moment, uh, say Kim is a student who registers in week two of semester. Uh, Matt is, uh, that's me to, to draft a letter which confirms that, that Kim's registered and generally supported for flexible deadlines, extra time and written assessments and especially exams. Uh, Kim must distribute the letter in advance on a case-by-case -case basis to faculty staff as required. There's a wait list for support letters. Kim is nervous about approaching faculty staff and hopes not to need any extra time in class tests. So, um, so eventually Kim uses that letter. Uh, oh, thanks, Nile. Um, eventually, so Kim's hesitant to use the letter. She eventually uses the letter to make a late request, or he, uh, for a, uh, to a teacher for class tests. That, uh, but because the request's late, the test needs to be delayed to allow time for that, those AAAs to be put in place. The teacher then contacts me later on to ask why they were not advised earlier that they had a student in their class that was registered and needed alternative arrangements. Um, the registration is due to expire at the end of the semester and a new letter will be required uh, if Kim is to re-register. So the aims of uh, developing this project was to address some of the problems with that process. Uh, urgency uh, is a, was an issue in that uh, the, the, uh, if we could get instant AAA advice direct to the target, that's going to uh, avoid those delays. Uh, the capacity, if staff are getting the uh, information early, then their, their capacity to manage it in a timely manner is, is uh, improved. Um, 
the efficiency is, is improved by eliminating redundancies in our processes whereby we're taking information and repeating it in other formats or other systems, in a letter, for example. Um, the responsibility uh, is currently in the old system on the student. So uh, with uh, a new way of doing it in Moodle, we could perhaps lift the responsibility from students to additional burden on them to distribute information. I mean, they've come to us, they've told us their information, why should they then have to go around throughout the university repeating themselves? Um, simplification. Uh, the the, um, the advice to students is, can be a lot simpler. The, the process in all the faculties is, is the same. And there's also potential, uh, we're hoping that the information being in faculty automatically enables uh, uh, the faculty to use it for other purposes, potentially, for example, students who are involved in academic progress uh, proceedings. It's important for the committee to know that whether or not they're registered. Um, the big issue with uh, uh, getting this up and running was, the, I guess, the most complex issue was the privacy issues. Uh, this is just an example of... Uh, uh, privacy, uh, risk management plan for probably the last uh, privacy hurdle that we, we looked at, which was basically about, uh, we were talking about 4,000 4, staff potentially accessing this information, um, and some of them don't need it. So um, the, but we have a number of prote protective factors in place, um, and basically the, the, uh, the ultimate one, of course, is that students were able to elect to uh, go with the old method if they had their own privacy concerns. All right, so um, how does the system work? So um, the students still have to register with Disability Support Services, and once they've uh, confirmed and registered, Disability Support Services then puts it in, our, um, in the Monash student database called Callista. We also have another system called Monash Reporting System and the Central Examinations Unit, um, where the, the Callista view of the information um, goes to those two um, departments, if you like. And um, we, th we also put it in Moodle. So it, there is a 24-hour link um, every day to update Callista and between Callista and Moodle. And um, we also like to acknowledge that the code um, to the, the development of the code behind this was um, through our third-party provider, Blackboard. Um, so what does the um, alternative assessment info report look like in Moodle? When you go to your administration, to your unit, and you go to the administration blog, there is, in the reports, there is an alternative assessment info. You click on that, and um, this this view comes up. We have um, grayed out the names um, of the students due to privacy reasons. Um, so some of the things that um, are in the columns that you see, I know it's a bit too small, so I'll just quickly tell you. It's that you have student ID, you have the name, the email address, um, the staff, the disability advisor responsible for the student, um, when the expiry um, would, the expiration of the registration. Um, and things like whether a support letter is available and what are the alternative arrangements for the students. So um, we also have um, a link to the privacy policy right at the top in blue. And um, we also have um, a link to guidelines um, for academics to teach them how to use this report. Um, and the report can also be downloaded to, um, to Excel or CSV. So, um, some of the deliverables from the project included um, so did, included a guide to how to use the report, like I mentioned previously. So these are just screenshots of it. It's, it's about a six-page report, I think. Um, and we also created um, a quick video um, to help academics quickly understand how um, to use the report. So um, it's about a two-minute video, I think. Um, so we also obviously communicated to the staff and students about the AAA information that's available in Moodle. So things like the Monash Insider article, which is a weekly newsletter at Monash. Um, we email all the staff that had a AAA student. 
we inform the Moodle administrators, sorry, we inform the Moodle administrators and also inform all the students that are registered with DSS. Okay, so how does the new process work? Uh, now this student comes uh, to register with us uh, and we, as soon as we put our information into the student uh, database, it's within 24 hours fed straight through to Moodle and the academics uh, staff can access that information. Um, and they could uh, then potentially be contacting those students. So the other way around where we had the, the, the student who was responsible for contacting the staff, now there's potential for the staff to have information in advance and potentially contact those students. So look, just uh, give you a quick case study of how that might look. Uh, Bryn registers in week two of semester for similar reasons as Kim. Within a few days, Kim receives an email from a teacher noting their registration status and encouraging Bryn to contact if they can be of any assistance, for example, by giving earlier notice of essay topics. Later, the lecturer blind copies an email list of registered students in the unit, requesting that if any of them need adjustments in a forthcoming class test, they should reply to confirm by a certain date. Uh, next semester, Bryn's registration is renewed and Bryn knows that the relevant faculty staff can confirm the details almost immediately. Bryn is developing confidence about approaching new teachers for assistance. So uh, there's obvious benefits for the students and for the staff. For disability services, there's... Uh, whoops. Where is that? Oh, yes. So, for, thank you. <laughs> Uh, for disability services, it means we're spending less time uh, writing letters and more time value-adding, potentially spending more time liaising directly with both with either students or staff. Um, we, this, our services are also are more visible throughout the university and better incorporated into the mainstream as part of a, a community development aspect, I suppose, that, that uh, uh, the alternative arrangements are seen more as a core part of the university business. Uh, more than they are, have been previously. So we did a survey to both staff and students in semester one this year. So um, 117 <coughs> students completed the survey. Um, we, we asked them if they're aware that the academics now have access, almost immediate access to triple E information model and more than half said yes. Has this improved their student experience at Monash? More than half said yes. And um, we also asked, how has the student experience improved? So majority of them felt like it's less stressful, stressful and have made their life easier, um, which is what we want to hear. And um, then we, they also find that it's easier to arrange AAA with their teaching staff or get an extension to their um, assessments. So um, we also surveyed the um, staff and um, more than half said that they are aware that AAA information is now available in Moodle. And um, out of the percentage that said yes uh, to the earlier question, 91% said that the information is useful. Um, and the information has provided um, some assistance with their teaching. And um, it's good to know that 71% of them say that they no longer require a support letter from DSS, which um, benefits both the staff and DSS, rather than continuing communicating requiring the letter. So, um, yeah. So some of the future improvements we like to see from this, um, we're looking at uh, an optional automatic email notification to teaching staff that there is a change in the AAA information report in Moodle. We also like to put in the contact number for the disability advisor. Um, th there has been requests for um, to identify the campus of where, of where the students are currently enrolled in. And we also like to be able to give information about the students' conditions and impacts through a support letter to be linked from the report. So thank you for your attention. Do you have any? Do you have any questions?
Hi, th thank you very much. That was a really illuminating, um, uh, really illuminating presentation. Are you considering automating those letters one day in the future? You know, you're saying the academics can send, or would that defeat the purpose of this this model of making that human contact? Can you clarify? So when you put up your second process map, you put the results, sorry, you put the information into Moodle, Moodle mm -hmm. um, yeah, into the spreadsheet that syncs with Moodle and so on. It then goes to the, uh, sorry, the academics can see that information and contact the student. At any stage in the future, do you want that contact to be automated? So as soon as the student's information goes in, that letter is sent. Uh, I think maybe your... Uh, we're talking about two different types of letter, I think. Um, the letter that uh, this is replacing is one which we, the disability services drafted and provided gave to the student to give to the academic. OK. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that, that can still happen uh, and, and will happen for some students where uh, uh, more complex information, if you like, about disability and impacts might actually help in the teaching process. Mm -hmm. um, most of the letters we've been providing haven't needed that info, but where we, where we want to pass that information on, we want to have a link in the report so that the academic can say, oh, there is a letter uh, associated with this student, let's click on it and have a look at it. Oh, great. Yeah, nice repository. Well done. Mm -hmm. How much of this is um, code that you've added or had written, um, and is that available? Um, um, the code is written um, by Blackboard, um, so we can talk about whether it's available. It's not a plugin; it's a code um, for Monash Moodle. Yep. Thank you for your time. Thank you.